Hello and welcome to episode six of the Kangaroo English podcast, a podcast about language for people learning languages. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a fascinating language paradox, how it predicts the future of the English language, and how it explains why the music of Frank Sinatra is so damn good. As always, before I begin, I just need to say that this podcast, along with all of my other online activities, including my YouTube channel and the Facebook group, are all made possible thanks to your very generous support. So if you would like to sponsor free English education, then there are two ways that you can do that. The first way is that you can become my patron on Patreon. Or you can buy some really sweet Kangaroo English merchandise. The links for both of those things you can find on my website at kangarooenglish.com. How many of you have listened to popular music recently and thought, this is terrible. Music used to be so much better in the past. But then, because you are intelligent, and skeptical and curious people, you think, no, it's just me getting old and nostalgic. But here's the thing, you are actually right. Music is getting worse. Well, maybe not worse, just more simple. In a paper published in 2012 called Measuring the Evolution of Contemporary Western Popular Music, Researchers analyzed a database of one million songs from the years 1955 to 2010, and they discovered three important trends. Over time, music has less pitch progressions, more homogenization of timbre, and less dynamic range. Basically, over time, music has become louder and more basic. A separate analysis shows that the lyrics in music are also becoming more repetitive. In the last 60 years, the most repetitive pop music lyrics are from Rihanna, and the least repetitive lyrics were from none other than Frank Sinatra. I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with language? Well, it turns out that the same thing is happening with English. It's getting simpler. You see, there's a strange language paradox. Languages that are more popular, that have more speakers, have a simpler structure and more vocabulary. They have less grammar and more words. But what is causing this and why is it happening? To understand, we need to start with Chinese restaurants. Have you ever been in a new town or city and you need to find somewhere to eat? But you're not sure which restaurant to choose, so you decide to go into a restaurant that's full of people. Because if the restaurant is busy, then obviously that means that it's good, right? So what happens over time is that restaurants with more people attract more people and restaurants with less people attract less people. The rich get richer. And language works in exactly the same way. So this restaurant model is the model that linguists use when they want to simulate the way that language works in communities. And it's called the Chinese restaurant process. In January, the Royal Society published a paper called Simpler Grammar, Larger Vocabulary, How Population Size Affects Language. In this paper, they used computer simulations of the Chinese restaurant process to explain the reasons behind our linguistic paradox. Now, to understand the explanation, I want you to imagine yourself in Chinatown, trying to choose a restaurant. So, firstly, you're probably going to choose a restaurant with a lot of people. And you go in and sit down at a table. 
Now, the other people at the table are also very interested in languages, and they decide to teach you some new things in English. Now, there are two possible types of things that they can teach you, easy and hard. You can learn the easy things from hearing them only once, but the hard things they need to explain to you twice before you learn them. So, by the time you've finished your first course, maybe you learn a few different easy things, but only one hard thing. And then, because the restaurant is very popular, some new people come in and sit down at your table next to you, and you decide to pass on some of your new English knowledge, and you teach them some things. So you start explaining, and then you finish your dessert, and it's time to leave. You had enough time to explain all of the easy things to the new people at your table. But you only had time to explain the hard thing once. So when you leave, you know that they're not going to remember it. As you walk home, you pass some other restaurants. Some are very popular and full of people, teaching each other easy and hard things, and others are empty, with only one person per table. So can you predict what will happen over time? Well, people in those empty restaurants who have nobody to talk to will not pass on their knowledge at all, and in the busy restaurants they will mostly only pass on the easy things. Now, imagine that in reality, in restaurants and offices and schools all over the world, with hundreds of millions of people speaking and writing and listening. That is exactly how language works. In the study, they showed that with a simulated population size of only 500 people, hard conventions can disappear completely. But in contrast, easy conventions are almost 100% active. It's really shocking and thought-provoking data. But how does this work in the real world? Some of the ways that English is becoming more simple are really subtle. For example, English is increasing in concreteness. That means that across all categories of words—nouns, verbs, prepositions, etc.—we are choosing words that are more concrete over words that are more abstract. Nouns like dog and computer. Are preferred over more abstract nouns like truth and feeling, and verbs like smile and throw are preferred over verbs like wish and sell. It's easier for our brains to process real, concrete things. A more obvious example, which is happening right now in English, is the disappearance of modal verbs. The once common modal verb shall is hardly ever used by younger speakers, and must has declined in usage by 50% in just a few decades. Modal verbs are hard; they have various abstract meanings, and they cannot be easily conjugated like other English verbs. For example, to use modal verbs to talk about the past, you need to conjugate them using the present perfect, and sometimes this conjugation can completely change their meanings. They are far from regular or easy to learn. So, what does this mean for the future of English? Well, the good news for learners is that as long as English remains popular. Its structure will continue to become more and more simple. We might see the disappearance of all modal verbs and abstract verbs like wish and hope. We might see all verbs become regular, so you could say "goed" instead of "went." Other annoying irregularities which make life so difficult for learners, like where to place the object in a phrasal verb, might become uniform. And who knows? Maybe phrasal verbs themselves will disappear. 
I know that for some people this is a horrible concept that English might lose all its charm or character. But there are three things to remember. The first thing is that language is always changing. It always has, and it always will. So don't even try to fight it. Just enjoy the ride. The second thing is that it might create a world where more people can communicate more easily. What a wonderful thing! Imagine if the whole world had a second language that they could communicate in, and share ideas and stories and emotions. And the third thing is that, just like with all effective communication, or Neapolitan pizza, or the music of Frank Sinatra. Simple is best. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. <laughs>